Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Lyle. I'm the lead trainer at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video, I'll be talking about the changes to color ramps that they viewed in version 10 of Visual Modulo Flex. The most notable new addition to color ramps is the ability to assign different color ramps to data that is being visualized. So here we're taking a look at a 2D DEM representing a ground surface elevation at a fictional site. As usual, it's taking the default rainbow color palette. However, I can easily change the color palette to a more conventional terrain color gradient in the settings. So I've got the ground surface visualized here. I'll right click it, select settings. This will open up the settings menu and I'll go to style and I'm on the colors node. Now to change the color ramp, I'll select this assign colors from ramp button. So this button right here. This will open up the color ramps window and we'll see all of the defaults. And for this, since it's terrain, I think I'll use the Wikipedia terrain. I'll select open and we see it's been loaded in. So we've got white values uh, representing highs and green values representing lows. And now when I hit apply, we can see that this color ramp has been applied. So this also works in 3D. So I'll open up the 3D viewer here and we can see that we're looking at a water table output. So this is the surface representing the water table elevation. And if I want to change the color ramp on this, I can simply right click it from the model explorer, select settings, and then the settings window, I'll go under style again. And now again, I'll just select load from ramp. And for this one, I'll use the Veritas color ramp. So I'll just select it off of the list, select open and hit apply. And as you can see, now this color ramp has been applied with yellows representing highs and purples representing lows. In addition to being able to change color ramps, we've also added a couple more features for version 10. So to demonstrate that, I'll open up this flex viewer where we're looking at some concentration outputs and I'll open up the color settings for this. So again, I'll just right click it, select settings, and then go to style colors. And we can see that uh, as is typical with these concentration outputs, it spans a, a few orders of magnitude. And oftentimes with concentration outputs, it's more convenient to look at them in a logarithmic view rather than a linear view. So to do that, I'm gonna change the minimum output here from zero to 0 0.01. Obviously you can't apply a log scale uh, if the bottom value is zero. And then I'll just simply select this logarithmic scale option. And as you can see, Flex does the calculation automatically. And all I have to do is hit apply. And we can see that this log scale has been applied. Other new options have been added. So now maybe I'll change the view to this magma, select open. And now when I hit apply, you can see that the high values are represented by these whites, but the lows are represented by blacks. But you know, since this is a concentration output, maybe I want to represent there being more stuff there with darker colors. And I can easily do this by inverting the color ramp. So I'll just press this invert colors button right here, then hit apply. And now we can see that darker colors represent higher values. Another common problem is that oftentimes we might want to have some kind of cutoff. So perhaps we're looking at these concentration maps to try to better understand our model and maybe there's some regulatory limit at 100. So what I can do is add a color stop here, set its value to 100, and I can press this, this hard break here. So when I do this, you can see that now we've got a high color and a low color. Uh, and now just so that it's obvious when I'm analyzing, I'll change this low color to this nice pink here, or maybe not a pink, maybe a, maybe a green. So it shows up very well. And now we can see the areas where it's close to 100 but not over 100 are represented in this green here. And meanwhile, everything that's inside of this green bands here are areas that the model predicts are above a regulatory limit. Finally, the last thing I want to show is how to create and import new color ramps. So I'll turn on the heads output and turn off the concentration output. And I'll turn off the grid so that it's easier to see. And say that for the heads, I want to represent them with whites representing high heads and dark blues representing lows. 
this is pretty easy to do in the color ramp creator. So I'll right click the heads and again, just open up the color settings. And now I can select load from ramp. So this kind of thing with a, a, uh, a little flash. And from the color ramps window to create a new ramp, I'll just select this create new color ramp option. I can give this a name, maybe blue to white. And I'll delete most of these color stops. Make the bottom color white. And I'll make the top color nice blue. So now I can select save and close. And this blue to white has been added. Select open. I'll flip it around so that whites are high. I'll hit apply. And our custom color ramp is applied. Finally, I'll briefly talk about importing color ramps. So you can import color ramps in the CLR format. And the CLR format is uh, pretty simple. So I'll open up this example color ramp here. So this is a color ramp that I created, uh, equal luminance rainbow. And we can see that if we open it up, you can see that there's this meta information in the first line as well as in the last two lines. And for the lines in between, there's just the value of the stop. So this is basically just like the percentage. So this would be, you know, the stop at 57% and so on. And then just red, green, blue, and alpha. You can find uh, references online for how to create CLRs. So to import the CLR, it's very simple. Again, I'll select load from ramp and I'll select import. And then I'll find this equal luminous rainbow, select open. And now it's been loaded in, this is equal luminance, select open and I'll hit apply. And my new color ramp has been applied. So that's everything that I wanted to share. Thank you all for watching and I hope you learned something.